Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice has expressed worry over the statement by the National Economic Council, NEC, to negate the National Social Register used by the former President Muhammadu Buhari's administration to implement its conditional cash transfer. Now, in a statement signed by its executive director, that's David Ugolo, the group noted that it expected a rebuttal of some clarification or some clarification from the office of the vice president to douse attention generated days after the meeting of the National Economic Council. Now, the statement says in order not to embroil a serious governance tool such as the social register in politics, it's imperative to assert the facts surrounding the creation of the register and the transparent process adopted in developing it based on its experience. Governor Chukumasoludo of Anambra State has said, contrary to what the previous administration projected, it's not possible to digitally transfer money to the poorest of the poor, the majority of whom are unbankable. Well, we now turn to Executive Director Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice, David Ugola, for a conversation on the controversy over the integrity of the National Social Register and the criteria adopted in the compilation of the register as well as ways to improve it. Welcome to Newsday here on Arise News. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us as well. Now, we've had some analysts here who are of the opinion that the focus should be on data mining and verification as opposed to what was um, the decision that was reached by NEC. What's your take on this? First, thank you for inviting me to be part of this program and then to also use this opportunity to also clarify um, how we were engaged in the process and what happened um, in the last one or two years we've been engaged with the use of the social register. As you rightly noted in our press statement, we were very surprised because first, um, I think that was the second NEC meeting and the expectation from Nigerians was that at least NEC uh, at that meeting, it was good and it's a welcome development that the NEC was focusing on the issues of poor people in the country. But the thing that raises concern is about institutions that were put in place to help the government to address the problem of um, poverty that was being referred to as the social register, which the NEC uh, in their outcome according to Professor Soludo, that it lacked integrity. How Professor Soludo and his co-governors arrive at that conclusion is something that is very surprising because I don't understand the basis. I don't understand how they arrive at that decision. But for us, we have engaged in the process. We have assembled over 800 monitors across the country. We were monitoring the cash transfer program. And as you know, the cash transfer program came about as a result of the $325 million, $5 million that was recovered from Switzerland on the Abasha's money that returned to Nigeria, that Nigerian government and Switzerland and World Bank entered into an agreement to be used for cash transfer program. And the basis for that cash transfer program was based on NCTO, that's the National Cash Transfer Office, was going to mine the data of poor people from the National uh, Social Register. So, and it was clear in the mining that every information of the beneficiaries that received that 5,000 Naira that was going to each beneficiary, the information was coming from the state. And what we did as civil society to ensure that the agreement reached with the Swiss government and, in, and the World Bank because we were at the conference where this agreement was signed in December 2017 in Washington at the Global Forum on Asset Recovery. We agreed in principle with an MOU we signed with the Ministry of Justice that we will monitor the process. We went and we were given all the access to the information 
uh, with the cooperation from the National Cash Transfer Office. We deploy our civil society monitors, community-based organizations across the 36 states. And in each of these monitoring, we had information that we got from in situ and about the money that was received, transferred through the companies that were disbursing this money to the beneficiaries. And we compared the money that was released at the, from Central Bank and to the money that was received from the people. And we used the Nigerian social register information compared to the beneficiary with which the National Cash Transfer Office used in disbursing this money. And we did that. We have the report. One of the reports is what is with me here. Documented every engagement that we had across this country. And this report, we are shared with the federal government, the Ministry of Justice. We share this report with the NCTU, the National Cash Transfer Office. We share this report with media. We had several press conferences where we shared the outcome of our field report. And, and I know that when this agreement was reached with World Bank, the basis for that agreement in disbursing this money for poor people across the country was on the basis of the social cash, uh, social register. So I was wondering where, how the NEC came to the conclusion that the register was lack integrity. Two things that comes out very clearly is that in our report, uh, is the social register perfect? It's not perfect. Does it require reform? Definitely. But the problem is that it would be wrong for NEC to come to the conclusion that a register that was used, which was the basis which the agreement that the Nigerian government reached with Switzerland and the World Bank, and that the, this, that register is lack integrity. And to worsen the application, Nigeria have also secured another grant, another loan from IDA, from World Bank, the $800 million. And the basis for moving forward in terms of disbursing the cash transfer is also going to be based on this register. So I don't know how the NEC intends to proceed, taking into consideration that the government of Nigeria has entered into commitment with external party. And what it, put, it, it shows clearly that do you think the Nigerian government will be trusted if this becomes eventually what is the basis of Nigeria moving forward with? That's why I think that we have to reflect on the outcome of NEC. And our concern is that we want a situation, because if you listen to the different governors that have participated in the NEC meeting, we have the uh, statement from the Kaduna State Governor, we had a statement from the Nasara West State Governor, and then you have the statement from uh, Professor Suludu. If you compare the statement coming from these three governors, you will see that there is no consensus. And so it would be very good if the chairman of the NEC, which is the vice president, can help Nigeria in moving forward to clarify the position of NEC on the status of the social register. But to say that this register lack integrity, I don't understand how they came to that conclusion. And it's a bit difficult because we have the report, we have the facts, we have the evidence that Nigerian government uh, disbursement of the recovered asset to Nigeria was disbursed using the social register. Thank you. D duly noted. And in, speaking of the social register, we also understand, you know, that the NSR is an aggregate of all state social registers. Now, it's also been further explained that the SSR yes. goes through various checks and validation processes before it's even accepted into the database. Now, based on what you, you've seen in terms of next feedback, do you think there might be some hidden agenda with this uh, the conclusion that was reached? I, I, look, you see, I... I, I, I I mean, I'm a professional. I don't like insinuating. I don't want to be cynical. Everything I say, I say with evidence. I, I, you know, we, we live in a country today that the level of trust is gone down very well. And so um, it's difficult for people to trust government. It's difficult to trust government institution. But I do not want to respond in that direction. And I feel very strongly NEC is an important institution. They play a very uh, special advisory role to the government. They are constitutionally backed, and I think that in moving forward, 
the position they have put on the table require a lot of uh, um, dialogue. Well, and, yeah. and I think if you have seen, uh, if you have seen their response so far, you found very clearly that uh, I think uh, some mistake has been made. And in moving forward, I think it's very important for the vice president to respond on behalf of NEC so that Nigerian can move forward with where are we with the social register. Well, your, your discretion is certainly respected. Now, um, we've seen some states make various moves, like um, the likes of Kwara and Ogun State, with 10,000 Naira palliatives for workers there. But for those that might decide to come up with your own, you know, um, state registers, I might act actually decide to go take a, a, you know, start things from scratch. Then do you think based on the fact that as of um, June 27, the World Bank statistics shows that an additional 4 million Nigerians have been plunged into poverty due to inflation. Do you think the metrics used to identify the most vulnerable Nigerians might need to be expanded? Definitely. That's why I said that, you know, the current Nigerian social register is not a, it's not a static document. It's a document... It's a database that needs to be refined from time to time. It's not something that, um, as we expect, that um, it's possible that some people that we register um, in the database are, are dead, and it's possible that there are some people who have moved on, and there are some people that have moved beyond the poverty level. And so it requires, from time to time, revision. And the opportunity to do that is clear in the framework of the design of the database. So, and then you, we should also separate federal government social protection intervention from state intervention. The state also, if you look into the Nigerian protection policy framework, it encourages the state and the local governments to also embark on their social protection program and social protection intervention. But what is important is to look into how you design the register where you can mine the data of those who are beneficiaries and i think you've looked the effort and resources put in place to design and come up with the nigerian social register and in designing the social register it's not what the federal government did alone if you look the framework it was done it was carried out in collaboration with state institutions and, and we have state representative in our deploying monitoring team across the country. Our monitoring team, civil society, met with these stakeholders. And that is why I'm also putting it as a challenge to the media. Because oh, the controversy around the social register can be resolved if the Nigerian media can take up the responsibility to indep independently verify the status of the register. Because now we have two parties. NEC has issued a statement, and then there are those who are saying that it's not true, that the register is valid. What should happen? Instead of belaboring this issue, my expectation is that the Nigerian media, both electronic and print media, they should try to visit the office in the state at the federal level Look into, the bo look into the register and see if the current database, which was the basis where they mined the beneficiaries of those who benefited from the $325.5 million recovered from Switzerland, which was an agreement reached between Nigerian government and the Swiss government. If the people who benefited from this money, if they are Nigerians, or if they are ghosts. I think the media will really help the country. And that will help end this controversy and help put to pay the idea of that beneficiaries were mined from a non existent database, which is not true. I can tell you, we went to Nasarawa, we went to Sokoto, we went to Rivers, we went across the country. I've been involved in this campaign for over 30 years. I can tell you, and we have our reports. Our reports are there to confirm. The informations are there. The problem we are having in this country is that you just see somebody who just come to the television, they make comments, 
We had no fats. I am speaking, I'm telling you that we deployed over 800 NGOs to monitor the use of Abasha's money. The second Abasha won the $325 million that was recovered from Switzerland. All the beneficiaries were mined from the Nigerian Social Register. And we interrogated that register. We interrogated the office that we are implementing this project. We have our report. We have our evidence. Go, go eat. You will see it. You will be able to challenge whether these are facts. And the people who benefited from the Abasha uh, returned asset are alive. They are there. What are we saying? And in our report, we also raise questions on how the social register can be strengthened. We also raise questions on how the implementing agency that was responsible for the management of the database can be strengthened. And when the World Bank mission visited Nigeria during their engagement, also in their subsequent monitoring, they also engaged us as civil society. And we also shared our report. And then when we also had our field monitor report, we also met with the federal government, the Ministry of Justice, to validate our report. We also met with representatives of the Swiss government. As a matter of fact, I actually traveled to Switzerland to present the field report on how Abasha's money that was recovered. And as I speak today, our monitoring through the mantra project that we implemented in monitoring this project is referred to as a gold standard. I just came back from Georgia, where United Nations invited four countries for me to come and share our experience in Nigeria. And our, our, our experience in Nigeria is one of the standards being referred as best practice globally. So what are we saying? And now, do you think the World Bank, if the funds for monitoring didn't go well, do you think the Nigerian government would have gone back to the World Bank and negotiate another second tranche of scaling up the, the social protection program? On what basis was it carried out? So I think um, to reduce the resources we are spending in discussing this in a negative way, I feel very strongly. That's why I said, first, I commend the NEC. I commend them very well. First time, the issue of poverty is assuming um, very important uh, space for Nigerian discussion. In the past one week now, all the media, both electronic and print, are focusing on the issue of poverty. At least the poor people is receiving attention, but not in a bad light. We want to see more investment in tackling poverty in the country, but in tackling poverty in the country, you need the right framework. Social protection program implementation, is, it didn't start with Nigeria. It will not end with Nigeria. Cash transfer program that is being uh, implemented in Nigeria, it's implemented in other countries like Brazil, like um, uh, Ethiopia. So Nigeria is not the only country. And what we need to understand, there's no one perfect model. And there's no one perfect solution. And when there is a problem, what do you do? You learn lessons from it and improve in it. And that's what I expect from NEC. Government is continuity. And luckily enough for Nigeria, Tinubu government is not different from Buhari government. They are APC-led government. They are the same government. And, 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 the, and the civil servant who implemented this project, because the problem I must explain to you are, is politicians. You know, when politicians are not able to manipulate a database, it becomes a problem. And when you allow the database to be colored by political, who, 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 which party, political party you belong to, an example of this is during the COVID palliative period. You saw what happened with the palliatives. You saw how the politicians manipulated the access to palliative. You saw how the people went into a warehouse looking for palliatives. But that didn't happen in the disbursement of Abasha loot. First time in history. And the informations and data are there for verification. So we need the right framework. And if you look the way the database, the social register was designed, it's well scientifically designed. A process was followed. It was participatory. The communities are involved. The states are involved. And the people are alive. The state also have opportunity to also do something around in designing their own intervention. 
but they don't need to discredit what has happened. And that's my own call. And I think uh, the federal government, the president, President Tunubu, has responsibility to rise above this controversy. He has to come up very strongly on how he wants to tackle the challenge of poverty. And in tackling the challenge of poverty, he needs to have an institution to carry it out. You will not allow politicians to come and decide who is poor, who is not poor. When you allow politicians to begin to decide who is poor, who is not poor, it becomes a problem. We all know that there is a definition for poverty. We all know that in every community, they understand who is poor. And all these kind of characteristics was put in place in designing the current Nigerian social register. But like I said in our report, is there any way to improve on what is in existence? Yes. Is this Nigerian social register, is it a fake? It's not fake. It's real. And the database is there for anybody to verify. So the challenge I will actually put in the public is that the Nigerian media, journalists, they should interrogate the register oh. and find out whether it's real or not. Whether the people that are in the database are fake or not. Is it true that there are some? And then what most interesting in this whole thing is that in our in field monitoring, there was an opportunity for grievance mechanism. If you feel dissatisfied, there is a grievance mechanism. And we also exploited it. As a matter of fact, our report to NCTO also helped improve and draw the attention of National Cash Transfer Office to some anomaly. And I'm sure that some civil servants were suspended. And as a matter of fact, ICPC also commenced investigation to look into the system. So it wasn't a perfect system, but to say that the whole process lacked integrity, a framework that you used as a basis to disburse three hundred twenty-five point five million dollars including the $13 million that was an interest in addition to the $325.5 million that was released to the Nigerian government. Uh, Abba, that's not good enough. That's not, it's like saying that um, the $311 million that was recovered for the Abasha's money, for the Abasha 3, that, that was used for building three uh, legacy projects, the Ibadan, Lagos Road, the Abuja Kanu Road, and then the second Niger Bridge was also stolen. You know, people make sweeping statements. Indeed. Without facts uh, and evidence. Thank you so much, um, Mr. David Ugolo. That's the Executive Director, Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice. Your call to the media is noted, and thank you for also including the grievance mechanism when you carried out your your process.